Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. And now, here's our special guest host, Sherry Shepard. guest host for today, and I wanted to say to all of you, how you doing? How you doing? Oh my gosh, you're doing so well. So, let's get started because it's time for Hot Topics. All right. Everybody, this morning. It's such a great day. DJ Sus One. Hey. Love. You got a bright smile over there. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to be happy every day. That's right. <laughs> Let me tell you something about being happy. Every day we wake up and we are alive and we are in our right mind. It's a great day. We got another chance. Can I tell you that? So you already ahead of the curve. Yes. All right, Always. you know who well, you know who else is ahead of the curve? I see Marco G over there. Look at you. <laughs> hey Sherry. Whew. Marco, have your muscles gotten bigger since I've seen you last month? I, I think it's because of my birthday being the other day, you know? Is that what it is? I've been... <laughs> Woo! Well, you right. You okay. Did that you get finer with time. Go ahead. Thank you. I love it, Marco. And Suzanne, look at you over there, so cute. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. And there's Norman running in like he coming to get his plane at the airport. You, you right. made it in. <laughs> <laughs> we got the whole team over here now. You guys, before I even start, I have to make an apology. <laughs> because uh, yesterday I was doing the show and I was talking to Brendan, Suzanne, your husband. And I kept saying Brandon. And after the show, like I was saying, because I was saying Brandon a lot, and uh, somebody was like, it's not, it's Brendan. And I said, what? And they said, no, it's Brendan, it's not Brandon. And I said, I said Brendan. And they said, no, you said it wrong. So um, <laughs> take a look at how many times I said his name wrong. I'm wow. telling you, gotta take yeah. Brandon, the whole family. Brandon, your husband. Yeah. Brandon, no Brandon, you take uh, Brandon. Brandon, you are some kind of weirdo, Brandon. Uh -huh. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and, I, and I say, so, you know, here's the thing. Like, Norman and Suzanne, I just, it's, I, I think it's the nerves and the uh -huh. adrenaline. Right. Right. And I, in my head, I'm thinking the right name, but what comes out is something different. And I have been bad with names for as long as I can remember. Uh -huh. So this, like, I was horrified. Because I even think I called you Susan. You, you have before, not, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> and you never said anything, because I would be like, Susan, and you was like, ha, ha, ha. You never, you never said. So I, I felt so bad. And, that, and even Marco, when he came to see me doing, uh, when I was on tour with Kim and Babyface, I said, Marco Rubio is here. So, <laughs> like, I just, I'm one of them, pe one of those people, like, I meet you and the names fly out of my head. Uh -huh. And I have to even say an apology to Debbie Allen, because when I did my first sitcom, Cleghorn, some of the extras, Debbie Allen used to direct A Different World. Uh -huh. And so some of the extras came over and they said, Debbie Allen calls everybody sweetie. And I was over there, because I was in my 20s, I was like, she called everybody sweetie. She don't know nobody's name, call everybody sweetie. Uh, now, at this age, Debbie Allen, I'm so sorry because <laughs> 
because I can't remember names. And this is what I, if I can't remember your name, I go, hey, queen. <laughs> it's some other words to it. Y'all know who it is, H. Diva, hey, diva. Hey, girl, sis. Hey, friend. I got all kinds of adjectives, but it won't be your name. I'm telling you. So I am keeping a jar. I kept a jar. I put it, I watched it, and I put $5 in the jar every time I called Brendan, Brandon, which is, which is $35. Uh, can you come over here, Brendan, and get this doggone money? Can you, can you come over here? Because I said your name wrong so many times. Thank you, you didn't have to do that. And Thank I'm you. so sorry. Okay. Thank you. I'll take it though. Thank you so much. Honey, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so sweet. <laughs> I love that, Suzanne. Now you and Brandon can go to dinner. I am so excited. <laughs> Brandon. Look, I ain't, I ain't got nothing up in here, girl. This is... Oh, I got $5. They're $5. Thank you very much. Oh my, oh, my God, you gave me $100. No, no, we, this, you're not getting this one. This one right here. Let me tell you something about the Wendy staff and crew. Everybody is so generous on this set. I love it. So, and this is, and another, <laughs> what'd you say? That's for Marco Rubio. That's for Marco Rubio. This hundred dollars for Marco Rubio? No, Marco Rubio. Marco, no, he got to do more than just get a hundred dollars. You got to do some stuff for a hundred dollars. You, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready, Sherry. All right. Well, we'll talk about it later for the belated birthday. We'll have a talk later, Mr. Marco. <laughs> But there's another person I have to apologize to because I get names wrong, and that's what got me in trouble with Kenya Moore. Oh. Because I was on Watch What Happens. Look at that side eye I was given. <laughs> I was on Watch. <laughs> Look at that. Because we just had a bad night, uh, Kenya and I. I was on Watch What Happens Live, and I accidentally called Kenya. Kendra Norman, oh. and I didn't, and, and I don't know, some of y'all might remember it if you saw it, and she was very uh, irritated with uh -huh. me, and I didn't do it on purpose. It's just being nervous, because it's a live show, you're trying to think of jokes, you're trying to be funny, and so when she turned towards me, in my head, it was Kenya, what came out is Kendra. And because she was very irritated with me, like, and, and then I think a fan because they kept, and, I, and because I was nervous, I kept calling her Kendra. It was not, <laughs> I was not trying to shade, that's not me. But one of the fans called in, and I think they heard me say it so much, they said, Kendra, can you, and she was just done, <laughs> the, you know. So I, I, I wanted to apologize to Kenya because it just literally, it was me being nervous and trying to get back on track. So I don't know where we'll be uh, from here on in, Kenya, but I think you are good at what you do and you're talented and you're a beautiful uh, woman. So, you know, there you go, Kenya. Aww. Kenya! Kenya Moore! So, y'all, I told you yesterday about me going to the premiere of Top Gun Maverick, which you have got to go see. You gotta go see. But here's the thing, like this is a dress I had. Willie, our stylist, got me this dress and the shoes. And uh, we went to the after party, which I forgot to tell you about. And it was at Jenny's Supper Club inside of Chef Marcus Samuelson's Red Rooster Restaurant in Harlem. And I was having a good time. Suzanne, you know when you have those, you, you know you're feeling yourself, yep. you're looking good. And I'm open, I'm open to experiences. So I met this cute guy named TJ. Oh. Okay. And, and this is so, he came up to me and he was like, hey, Ma. And I was like, hey. <laughs> and so we were talking and having a really good time, y'all. We were connecting on such a profound level. And he was telling me about his hopes and dreams. And I was telling him about, you know, my goals and my dreams. And I asked TJ, I said, do you have any kids? He said, no. I said, jackpot <laughs> over here. And, it, I mean, we were vibing, and then I asked if he was seeing anybody. He said no, and I'm like, Sherry, you have hit the mother load tonight. <laughs> and Suzanne, he was so gorgeous, right. and I was, we were talking, and we were connecting, and then he said, excuse me, I have to show you a photo that I took with you some time ago. And I'm thinking, okay, well, show me the photo. And he said, this is a picture I took with you. This is the picture he showed me. Uh, him. I'm not lying. 
God. <laughs> this was a picture. He said, this is when I was five years old at a Nickelodeon event. That's what he said. And he said, you don't remember hugging me? And I said, no, because I'm 55. I don't remember <laughs> hugging you. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I looked at him and I said, little boy, how old are you? <laughs> TJ looks at me, he said, I'm 21. Oh! I said, what? I said, wait a minute, oh my God, where's your mama? <laughs> and then I remember he was calling me, hey ma, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> this this picture right here, literally every thought in my head, it was like, I, it was like it came to a screeching halt. <laughs> Everything in my head, I mean, it's one thing to be a cougar, but when you're 55 and they're 21, it's like you a barracuda. That's what it is. <laughs> literally. I kept thinking about was this little boy is 21 year old, 21 years old Norman. I was like, if I'm out to catch a predator, this right here, <laughs> this was, you know, and this is what I want to tell y'all fellas who like older women. Don't be pulling out pictures of them and you when you was five years old and all of that stuff. This that was horrific. <laughs> oh my God, ruined my whole night, Norman. Ruined oh. my whole. Funny. Night, and that's and, and TJ gave me permission to show that picture, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm gonna ever be right. right. This, <laughs> this is why I'm going right back to Trevor Noah. Somebody looks like right, up exactly, there, leave right. the little ones alone. <laughs> oh my gosh. So y'all, look at this. This is when my heart goes out to somebody. Khloe Kardashian has people thinking that she still loves her ex, Tristan Thompson. She looks so gorgeous there. Now. Um, Chloe posted a, a cryptic message saying, uh, was this Chloe? Was this, uh, this was Chloe That's posted. That's what she posted, yeah. This is what she posted. She said, um, you never stop loving. Once you love someone, honestly, truly, you will never be able to unlove them. You only find someone who will love you more. At that time, your old love will not feel so strong, but it is a heart. It will never let you forget something that ever made you happy. Now, you know, I, I, I feel for Chloe. You know, I, I wasn't sure who she, if she was talking about uh, Tristan or Lamar, but I think, I think she was talking about Tristan Thompson. And I feel for Chloe because Chloe wants to be loved. You can, you can see it, she wants to be loved, but I just think, you know, Chloe, you got your heart broken so many times. Sometimes you think that, that uh, just because, you know, you're having a future, but that sometimes don't include your past. And I, he cheated on her, allegedly cheated on her, four times. Uh -huh. And maybe because uh, she just got back from her sister's wedding, Courtney had a wedding in Italy, which is the romantic capital of the world. And, you know, it was this beautiful dress, and now she's with a man who loves her. So maybe that, that makes, you know, sometimes it makes you feel a little bit lonely. And, you know, I feel like that. Whenever I see, like, weddings, I saw Courtney's wedding, sometimes I think to myself, should I get back with my ex? And then I just get right, like, I re... <laughs> something, yeah, yeah. Something brings me right... Yo, y'all don't have to worry about it. I know I see the protective. You don't ever have to worry about it. But something brings me back to reality. And I feel like, you know, maybe she... You said what? We all do that. Like, you always think about your ex, so we're not judging you, Chloe. but I would say, you know what? You are a beautiful woman. You have gotten your body together. You are a mogul. You got a beautiful little girl. You got to believe that you deserve more. You have to believe that. There's the thing, you know, because you talk about your faith so much, so you gotta have faith that there's somebody out here that will adore you, that will love you, that will see who you are. You know, and it, it, that's, girl, you just talking. You need to be up here with me. I love you. you got, this, one, this one hit you good. This one hit you right where it hurt. But I, I feel like, you know, Khloe Kardashian, you don't ever want to, uh, to let a man know you're vulnerable right now. Right. He don't need to know that, because he already knows you want a baby. He knows you want to get married. And Tristan needs to work on himself. Tristan needs to grow up some more. And so you, my friend, just wait. Step back, go to some therapy, figure out who you are, and just wait. You're going to be good. It only takes one. That's it. It only takes one. So.
I'm wishing Chloe the best. Now, another one I'm wishing the best, y'all. Olympian Lolo Jones is having a hard time finding a man. So Lolo, this is Lolo. She's a 40-year-old virgin. And she she's 40 years old. I know, does that even exist? I know. <laughs> So Lolo does not believe in premarital sex. And now Lolo recently posted a message saying no one wants to date her because she won't have sex with them. And one of the things that Lolo said, she said, I'm asking God to please honor the desire of my heart. Your word says two are better than one. I'm asking God, my father, my protector, my provider, please show up, please honor me. Um, now I was gonna tell Lolo something totally different, but when you start throwing <laughs> God in there and scriptures, I gotta go a different way. Lolo, I feel bad for Lolo because yeah. she's, she, she wants to be loved and she's saving herself. I understand her trying to be true to her faith and saving herself till marriage. Uh, Lolo feels she's doing the right thing and I can relate to it. Not being a virgin, I ain't been a virgin in so long. I can't relate <laughs> to that one, but honoring. But the truth of the matter is, is this is a very hard thing because no matter how godly your intentions are, most men don't want, it's a pressure dealing with the emotions of a woman who's 40 years old and a virgin. Because you know, when, you, when you're 19 and you're a virgin, it's one thing because men think that they can teach you something in both respects, in the bedroom and life. But when you're 40, you already know life and you're not putting up with a lot of stuff and you a virgin. So <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. You know, you're giving up your virginity, now you're in love, now you're at the edge of the bed crying. And so a lot of men don't want to deal with that. So I'm trying to figure out, you know what, Norman? What? Maybe uh, Lolo needs to do a reality show where the producers search the yep. country yep. to find men that are virgins, but look, or at least celibate for a long period of time to yep. share her godly principles uh -huh. and allow them to compete for love. Something like that. They can sh call the show a Virgin Island. Something like Virgin <laughs> Island. I like that. I would watch that. I would be the I'd producer. Because uh -huh. let me tell you, this is a hard thing. And I, I understand it because I got a girlfriend, a very close girlfriend to me. She has been celibate for almost 30 years. Ooh. 30 years. Now I'm telling my girlfriend, she will get drunk and can't drive herself home, but she is saving that little kitty cat for her husband. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> and so, but she told me, uh, Suzanne and her doctor said that she needed to, that she needed to do something though, because if you don't use it, it's gonna close up. Oh. That's what, that's oh what the doctor, what, <laughs> which gives a new meaning to use it or lose it. That's the thing. <laughs> Because this is just very hard because now she's, she's been celibate so long, she's skittish around men. Yeah. Like if a man comes, she doesn't know because she's never dated, she's never done anything. And so, it, you know, and not using your vagina just on a clinical sense, picture like a, a rusty gate that hasn't been used. <laughs> like it's a gate. If you haven't used the gate in a long time, you haven't pushed it open. It's been 10, 20 years, you go to that gate and that, go, that gate go ee, ee, ee. And then at one time you push the gate open and it fall right off. It just falls. So I'm saying I, I, am, I am gonna be standing with you, Lolo, because again, like I said to Chloe, it only takes one. That's it, keep on doing it. Keep, don't lose faith, because that means you're getting close. That means you're getting close to that one. Do not lose faith, keep going. I want Lolo on this show. I want Lolo, I want Lolo on the show to talk about virginity uh -huh. and how wonderful it is. I, you know what? I just want a bunch of virgins on the show yeah. to talk about, to That's talk cool. about the upside of being a virgin. I want this, I want the audience to be full oh. of virgins. <laughs> The problem with, if it's a bunch of virgins in the audience, that's gonna be a real tight audience. Y'all gonna be, <laughs> don't wanna laugh. I want virgins. I want Madonna like a virgin to be playing. I want Richard Branson here from Virgin Airlines. I just wanted virgins. Virgins, virgins, virgins. We love virgins. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm standing with you, Lolo. Now we got more great show for you. Up next, actress and comedian Leah Deloria is here. So grab a snack and come on back. comedian, musician, and actress. She's currently starring in the Tony-nominated play, POTUS, or behind every great dumbass are seven women trying to keep him alive. <laughs> so give it up for Leah Deloria! First of all, 
off. Put those beautiful shoes on the shoe cam. There they is. is. Like those there shoes right is. there. <laughs> you better stop. <laughs> Let me tell you, Leah, I'm so excited that you are here. And... <laughs> like, you just... And I want to say to you, happy belated birthday, because you just celebrated your birthday. <laughs> It's my birthday week. It's, it's your birthday, birthday week. week. I and celebrate my birthday like Hanukkah. Uh, yeah. A week. A full week, yes. There you go, and you should, because yeah. you are 64 years old and you look beautiful. Thank 64. You. Thank 64. You. This is what 64 looks like. How did you celebrate it? Um, oh, my birthday. Yeah. Oh, well, I went to my favorite, favorite bar. It's called the Cubby Hole. It's in the West Village. Yes. Uh, on the corner of 12th and 10th. Uh, 12th and 4th, uh -huh. sorry. 4th Street and 12th Street, that crazy area yeah. of the, yeah. And a lot of people came by. We, I had some chicken wings and some pizza there because I'm just, I'm a chill kind of person, folks. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm chill. So chicken wings, pizza, uh, we had uh, many shots of tequila. We're That's bored. what I'm talking about. Many shots of tequila, and I probably drank, I, you know what, can I just say to you, my darling, I love you with all my heart, and I'm so glad that I'm here. Oh, man. But, oh, well. But scheduling a pickup at 11 o'clock in the morning for Leah Delaria the day after her birthday is a hate crime. I know, I know. <laughs> But you look so good, I can't even tell. You've been out all night partying. I've been out all night partying. I'm still drunk, I think. <laughs> <With me. laughs> I have to say to you, because I know we're gonna talk about POTUS, but you are in one of my favorite shows. You play Boo Boo in Orange is the New Black. Yes. Okay? Do you keep in touch with any of your castmates? Oh, we all keep in touch. We talk yeah. to each other all the time. And in fact, Natasha Leone was just hosting uh, Saturday Night Live this yes. last Saturday. Yes. And as soon, as soon as she got done with her monologue, I texted her and I went, Tash, you killed it. I, yeah. I have to say, I said, you effing killed it. <laughs> and I said, it was, it was great. And she texted me back like five minutes later. I'm like, what are you doing texting me when you're doing a live television show in front of like millions and millions of people okay. worldwide? Hilarious. She took a moment out to say thanks. Oh, that was girl. hilarious. Well, I would like you, literally. You were so much fun. You got a lot of stuff to say. Now I was talking about Lolo Jones being a 40-year-old virgin and yeah. trying. And now, what do you think about a virgin who's 40 years old? You think like she'll have a hard time? Where's is this a camera that I can look at? The there we go. That you can look right there. Hey. You go. Hey, Lolo. Just saying if you need any help with that. Oh, is that what you say? No. You ask, so you say no, you No, I'm joking. Assist. Look, if she wants to be a virgin, she can be a virgin. I mean, aren't we fighting like crazy to do with what we want with our own bodies? That's so right. let her do her so thing. So you want it, that's right. That's right. I would like to go back to the, if you don't use it, it will, it will if you close don't up. Use it, if you don't use it, you, you lose, like, it's just like it, because just as we get older, being a virgin, you, you, you know, if there's nothing, we gotta, we'll talk about this over tequila, Okay, because that know. is, uh, that's freaking me out a little bit. Oh, just, you know, FYI. No, I think your loving is good, because you are in a relationship, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like you got, your loving is real good, girl. There you, she is. You, she's yeah. right over there. She's right over there. So you're in a relationship and you guys just moved in recently, right? Yeah, that R word freaks me out a little bit, but yeah, yeah. she's, uh, you know, I... Relationship freaks I needed out? an assistant, so I asked her to move in. <laughs> no, that's so mean. No. I, okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm in love and... Okay, there we go. And... There we go. She is, she is warm, funny, stunning, genuine, kind, and has the prettiest, look at that red hair, that beautiful red, long red hair. And, and a Jew, look. she's a ginger Jew. She's so, a ginger Jew. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you wanted... And I'm Sicilian, Jews and Italians, same people, so we're getting <laughs> along just great, yeah. See, you, you said love. Yeah. You can tell you in love from the picture. Baby, I love you, you know that. Oh. She's right over there. Where's she at? Yeah, she's right oh, over there. Oh, she's back there, hey girl. Hey, girl. There she oh, is. look. Up oh, here she comes the camera. Off oh, there, handing you a mic. Oh, are you in love? You in love, girl? I am. Oh. <laughs> I love being around 
about love. This is like, you know, because love just travels in the, in the energy of love. Like, it just hits you when you least expect it. Yeah? Yeah. That was, uh, the, I mean, everybody knows. I'm very famously saying, I'm not looking for uh, any relationship. I don't want to be with any one, single woman. I'm the Jack Nichols, I'm the lesbian Jack Nicholson. I just want to <laughs> date a lot of girls. It's all I wanted to do. Oh my and God. of course, that's right where I was. And then, bang. See? The universe hits you right square in the middle of the face. OK. Every time. That's what they say. You make your plans, and God says, ha, ha. I, exactly. exactly. Now, you got to tell me something. I, POTUS is such a big so hit. Good. Oh, my gosh, you have got so to good. tell me about this play. <laughs> POTUS. Tell me about your character. Tell me about the play. I play the, the best I can do without spoilers. Okay. Because this is a farce. It's a comedy. It's fast-paced. It's seven very, very, very funny women in it. OK. Uh, you know, all, all, of, all of us are known for comedy. Um, right? That You can see how many people. It's like crazy. Wow, look at this. Rachel Drecht is in this, and Julie White, and Vanessa Williams, and all of us. So I play the president's sister. OK. Oh, yes. And I, I can't really say much more than that uh -huh. without, because my character's kind of like Puck in Midsummer Night's Dream. My character just comes in and just stirs the S up. So with, yeah. with seven women together, how much fun are y'all having? Well, I'm the only rooster in this hen house, so I'm having a ball. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> are you kidding? My dressing room is next to Vanessa Williams' dressing room. What okay. do you think? Am I having a good time? <laughs> Who came to my birthday party last night? She came to my birthday party at the Cubby Hole, which is a lesbian bar. It's a total lesbian <laughs> bar. She came, and when she said goodbye, she went, Leah, a woman hit on me for the first time in my life. And I thought, girl, you're not paying attention. <laughs> because <laughs> this is not the first oh time in I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Leah, I just, girl, I want to go out with you. I just want to go out with you drinking. I'm ready. We'll Let's go. Let's you ready? You ready to go out? I'm ready to go out. I'm down. I do want to congratulate you uh, because you received the Howard Ashman Award for fighting against HIV and AIDS. Yeah. Congratulations. It meant a lot. It meant a lot. Tell okay. me about this. Thank you. Oh, so tell sweet. me. Tell me. Well, you know, I've been a, I've been a. I've been a professional lesbian since 1982, right? What's a professional yeah, lesbian? Yeah, before that, girl. I freelanced. <laughs> I, uh, and I became a famous lesbian in San Francisco in the 1980s. Uh -huh. So when I say to you, I stopped counting at 86. At 86? That the funerals and people that I knew. Yeah. I, stopped, I just stopped counting. Yeah. Um, so I lost a vast amount of my boyfriends. And I, we have reached a place now where I know where we came from. And I know the fight that I had to, that I had to do for us to be where we are today, where there's literally a commercial on television about you can take this pill and it will it will it will help you with your HIV. Yeah. You can live your life with HIV now. Right. The the strides and how how we had to fight for that. Um, I I just it meant so much to me to be recognized by my community uh, for the body of work, I guess. I don't know what else to call it that I've, that I've done. And I mean, I'm always making a joke, and that's my job. I've started as a stand-up comic. But I was genuinely crying when I received that award, and I'm tearing up a little bit now. You know what? It's so funny how you are not only changing the world through your activism, but you're changing the world through making people laugh, and you're touching everybody with, with, in the heart with the way you give people joy, Leah. Mm, so I'm so excited you. that you came here. Oh, and sorry. I either want to take you to dinner or you take me for drinks. One of them okay. two. Me and you. Come see POTUS. I will. We'll go out after. I will. We're we'll going to go out. some drinks. OK, that sounds so good, y'all. POTUS is currently playing at the Schubert Theater until August 14th. Up next, we try some of Amazon's coolest products. Give it up for Leah Delon. <laughs>
shopper, makes it easy for you. You can see in this video right here coming okay. up that all you do is, is press put down. The, yeah, just press down and boom, you press your, you take your onions, your apples, your fruits. It's so simple. So like, yeah, you know, okay, because I like do to do it and give it a little pressure. Boom! Like that? Right? I like that. And you've got everything chopped for you. There's 11 interchangeable stainless right. and steel. And then I could just eat you it. You can eat it. Okay, right there. Mm -hmm. Storage case. And this is dishwasher friendly. Price here is just 30 That was Udu. Good, right? So simple. $30 yeah. for this. So That easy. was, I like that. Yep, so another food item we have here. Mm -hmm. This is the Yonana's Soft Serve Dessert Maker. Ooh. Okay, so it's summertime. You need a little sweet treat, something cool. All you do here is you take whatever fruit you like. You'll show the video first so you can check it out. Okay. Okay. Fruit you like, you throw it in. You put to it in the maker. Mm -hmm. You turn it on, and this is after you just freeze the fruit. You take it out of the freezer. Okay. Make sure it thaws oh, for like ten minutes. Oh, and it comes minutes. out. It's like ice cream. It's like ice cream. Exactly. Your yeah. own soft serve. So we're gonna just flick it on right here. Turn it on, and then we're gonna throw some berries in. There's already some fruit in here, right? So you're gonna see as it comes out. Watch it come out a little oh, bit. I, I see it. Yeah, and very easy. And this is how you can do it for your family. You can do a single serving. Oh, there it is. It's coming. Oh, it's wow. It's coming. It's coming out, right? Nobody gave me all. Oh, I was like, where's my spoon? Yeah. OK. So this is so only this is the $50, blue, right? This is $50? A little soft serve for you. Oh, my god, that's good. So good, right? I made and this last healthy. night. And it's healthy for you, a nice treat. All right, let's get into a little working out. I know I always okay, want you to work. working out. Okay, I'm gonna just watch you. <laughs> okay, I'm All gonna right. make you do one thing, if that's cool. This what is, is it? the title tank, right? So it? this is where you can actually take a pound, these are, this is water, Okay. into this inflatable tube. You fill this up, it holds about 45 pounds of weight here, and it can be customizable. So you've got the sphere, you've right? Got the, the globe, I've got the sphere. We could do a little workout. You can do a, a woodchuck here item. You put it to the like side. This way. Exactly. Okay. Other like side. That. And everything is about. Oh, you can do, do the squat. squat. Yeah. Right? Everything is about. Like, uh, yeah. There you go. You got it. Back. <laughs> okay. <Whoa. laughs> it's hard, right? This thing it's is hard. I know. Oh my but it's god! About stabilizing your core and every, all the water movement. Oh, that's why I didn't work because I don't have a core. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. No. So okay, you go. Okay. Put this in your bag. Throw it and go. Oh, this is cool. And this is sixty dollars, starting at sixty dollars. Yes, right? and you can take this with you. Exactly, and because you can't take weights with you while you're in your bag, so good to go. Put this in the park. I love it. Yeah, this I like. I okay. Have tank. So now we're gonna. Oh. Move on. Oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we're gonna move on to our DIY ice roller here. So Ooh, what is this? If you've ever had puffiness, you can check out in our video. You can see how if you really want to start your day off before, just to instantly rejuvenate your skin, we're gonna throw <sighs> the ice. Roller into the freezer, fill it with water. Yeah. And then you take it out after four hours and you literally take it to your skin. Ooh, yourself, okay. All like right. Like an ice facial, right? Oh, like a, wow. Yeah. I, I love that you're doing this over your right makeup here. right I, now. I know Latrice but, is going to kill me, my makeup artist. <laughs> so literally, it depuffs you, it gets your skin ready for your makeup. And if you've had a hard night the night before, I mean, we're talking. Like this freezes do it. your face exactly. right here. Okay. This is only fourteen dollars. So fourteen dollars. All right. Like, okay. And last but not least, come around with me right here. I want to introduce you to the hottest game of the summer right now. What is this? Cross. Hey, Marco. Hey, Suzanne. Okay. okay. Check out this video right here. This is a cross mix between volleyball. Yeah. And four square, okay? Oh! Like bringing it back to your childhood, four square at the gym, you know, if you're on recess. But yes. this is what you can play with all of your friends. And the goal is to take the server out of the box, basically, and then you can move and rotate. And everybody has a chance exactly. to get the ball. So we're gonna play a little round here. We got Suzanne, she's ready to go. Ready. Marco, ready. 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 Come on, come over here. here. Let's go, Sherry. Come on. I played volleyball. I was varsity okay, ball. Okay, what is right? Let's right. go. Right. Bring so it. I'm gonna serve it. To you. Oh, and then oh, the goals are oh, 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 Woo! Yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, my you God. Get into it. This, this is so fun, right? Fun. So, hey, I, so this is me. Oh, I'm oh. supposed to do it. Wait. Okay, you can do oh, whatever. Wait, wait. But then I serve again. Okay. Whoa! Oh, wow, see? Whoa. It's like Whoa. you get it. Oh, my gosh. That is so freaking so much fun.
fell in love with this video of a military brother surprising his sister at her college graduation. Take a look. I received a letter, an email again, from Ladero Light. Oh, God. He said, I want you to tell my sister how proud I am, how gracious she is, how superlative that she is, and I know that she is going to do amazing things in her life. She is one in a million with a special talent of knowing just how to move forward. And the letter goes on and on and on, but let me do this, Ladira. Talk to him about it. Ladero are here right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this video when I saw it on Morris Chestnut's page. And Ladira, you hadn't seen your brother Ladero in eight months. How surprised were you? Oh, I was crazy surprised. Like, um, like you know, Bob Davies, the president of Central Michigan, he had called me up there to initially talk about like my graduation gown. And then he went on to this letter, and I'm like, I thought it was from my dad, and I'm like, oh, that's cute. My dad wrote me a letter, and but as he went on, it was like, oh no, this is my brother. And so I didn't expect my brother to like really come or you know like do those things because he was deployed. And so like as soon as the audience like you know started applauding and everything, I was like, oh my god, is he here? And then I turned around, he's like right there. So it was crazy. <laughs> oh, and. Ladero, we're so Ladero, we're so thankful that you are here because right now you are in active duty and they're letting you off to for me to interview you. So I want to say thank you for your service, first of all. Thank you for your support. But what made you surprise your sister? So growing up, like we were really close with each other. We were like best friends and we were pretty much raised as twins. We were always there for each other's big moments and everything up until I enlisted in 2017. I actually went to basic training a week before her high school graduation oh. and had to miss out on it. So I knew it would be a, a really important moment for me to be at her college graduation. So like a few weeks before I emailed the school and I asked for a ticket or like if it was sold out, I said I would just stand in the back as long as I could be there. And the story actually got to the president. He was like, well, how about you actually come in and surprise your sister and even walk with her across the stage? And I'm like, okay, I'm down. Oh my gosh. And so, Ladero, Ladero, nobody knew that you were coming except your mom. So when your dad jumped out of the audience to hug you, what did that feel like? Was he surprised as well? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, actually, no one knew I was coming. It was pretty much a surprise for everybody. Like, even for my mom, I showed up uh, at the house two days before the graduation. I kind of said, like, I had an Amazon package coming. <laughs> So when she opened the door to grab it, I just jumped out from behind the bush. Aww. But in that moment with my dad, <laughs> in that moment with my dad, it's like they told me he was coming, but I didn't really process it in the moment. So I remember just standing there, and then the next moment I'm up in the air. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ladira, congratulations on your graduation. What is next for you? Um, well, really, right now, like, I'm a fashion designer, so I'm just building my brand. Um, and yeah, I am pursuing graduate school, so that's what's up next. <laughs> but as like as of right now, within this year, me taking off, it's just more so just building my brand. Oh, great! Now, what is your Instagram name so we can follow you? What's your Instagram? So my brand, yeah, my brand page is light l y t e dot house, and then my personal page, which also has like some of my brand on there, is. My initials, so L dot D dot L and two underscores. We got you, and congratulations to you. You guys are such an incredible family of closeness, of love. So I'm sending you all out to dinner to celebrate your graduation. Yeah. Enjoy, Ladira, and thank you so much, Ladira, for your service. We're going to be right back. It's time to play Celebrity Face Swap. Let's meet our player. Tell me your name and where you're from. Hi, Sherry. How you doing? How you doing? I'm Tamara from Rockland County, New York. Hey. hey! All right, Tamara, let's see the picture. Now, who are these two celebrities? Um, can I get a hint? Yes, you can get a hint. Uh, both are legendary singers. 
One presented the Icon oh, Award. Wait, uh, wait, I think it's Mary J. Okay. And the beauty mark, I think it's Janet Jackson. Yes, oh. girl! You better stop, Tamara! You won a $100 gift card to Brooklyn Dumpling Shop. We'll be right back. Giveaway a day in May. So today's giveaway comes from Printique. Now, Printique is an online photo shop that enables your inner creator to craft beautiful works of art using high quality materials. You can create customized photo albums, canvases, frame prints, and more. With Printique, you'll enjoy gallery worthy photo productions at an everyday value. So, studio audience, you are all getting a $100 gift card. We'll be right back. Yes, and tomorrow the stars of Broadway's Girl from the North Country are here. I love you for watching today, and I'm gonna see you next time on Wednesday. How you doing? <laughs>